just want to show you my eggplants. Those are the healthiest, healthiest eggplants I've ever seen. And also my artichokes are amazing. Look at those artichokes. And just the texture of their, their leaves are amazing. Hi flower friends. I am in my basement where I always am this time of year. And I wanted to talk to you guys today about something that a lot of people are afraid to do and that's thin your seedlings, your tomatoes, your peppers, stuff like that. So a lot of people are afraid to do it because they don't want to kill a plant. So I decided let's not kill plants. So what I've been doing, uh, and I'll show you how easy it is to do. I have been thinning my plants. This is an entire tray of tomatoes. There's 72 super healthy, awesome looking plants here. I thinned these last week, about a week ago, and these are all the plants that I thinned out. All I did was transfer them to another little pot. It's super easy to do, and these are now, instead of being tossed or thrown into the compost or tossed in the trash, these are now viable plants. So taking up one little cell on their own. So I'm gonna be doing that. What I like to do is I like to wait until the plant, the thinning one, the one you're gonna pull out, I like to wait until that has its first set of true leaves. So on this one, I wouldn't do it yet. It's too small. But let's say this one, this is an ox heart pink tomato. There are three seedlings in here and I'm gonna take out two of them and transplant them and they're gonna be fantastic plants. So I'm gonna be doing that with this set and this set. I do have another couple hundred tomatoes on my warming tray back there, they just started to sprout. Um, so I will be doing those for another 10 days or so until they get their first set of true leaves. And everything kind of grows at its own rate. Uh, these were all seeded at the same time. And let me see if there's a, no, these are all ox heart pink tomatoes. They're like a heart shaped and they're beautiful and they're pink and they're delicious. Um, all seeded at the same time. They grow at different rates. You can't ever be sure, even if it's the exact same seed packet, they, they all germinate differently. These are all different tomatoes. There's one, two, three, four, five. So there's six different tomatoes here. Oh my gosh. That doesn't even... This, this is the first time that I'm growing. It's called a, a climbing triple crop tomato, and they're the first set of true leaves on that one don't look very tomato-like. They look a little different, so I'm gonna have to look those up and see how they ended up. Um, so they're a vining tomato, which I've never grown a vining tomato before, so. Okay, super simple, <sighs> real easy. Let me move the camera and show you guys how I do this. Okay, so I'm zoomed in on this cup right here, and you can see one, two, three tomato seedlings. You can see the seed casing is stuck on the end of that, and you can just separate that and that'll be fine. No worries there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out two of these. It doesn't really matter which one. It's not, you know, if you were thinning the seedlings and you were going to be throwing them out, then obviously you would want to leave the, the sturdiest, strongest, thickest stem, least leggy plant. I would probably leave this one if I was only going to be leaving one of them. Just because it's bigger doesn't mean that it's better. This has a shorter stem and it's just, you know, a little different. So what I'm just doing is literally just pulling gently and there you have your tomato roots and then I'm just going to put it into the other tray over here and I'm going to zoom in and show you that. So what I normally do here is I take a popsicle stick, you can see how filthy this one is, I've been using it, and I just push it in and twirl it around and make the perfect little home for this tomato seedling and just a little, uh, another tip bury as much stem as you can. See how this one's really buried deep down in there? All of this stem of the tomato will start to root if it's underground. So I'm gonna bury that stem. That's about, that's pretty decent. And just backfill it in. And that's a happy tomato. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the rest of them. I'm gonna take this one that was the one with the seed casing, pull it right up, take my popsicle stick, and now this, I didn't water this because I had watered last night, I watered these tomatoes. So um, this, this, this is, by the way, so what I use, this is called Vermont Compost Fort V Mix, and it's an all natural compost potting mix. It's for seed starting. Uh, this is what I've been using for the most part. 
I did run out for a while, I, or I just got three more bags in, and what I was using in the meantime was the peat moss mixture that I've showed you guys in a video. I'm not loving that. I'm not loving it. It's not retaining the moisture like it should. Things are drying out in just hours, so I'm having to water things sometimes twice a day. I almost forgot like a super important thing. Label your plants. <laughs> so what I do here, so this one says small red cherry. So I know these first two plants are the small red cherry. Here's where I put the first ox heart. So I have my popsicle sticks and I'm just gonna write ox heart on it. And then I know everything that follows it until I meet another popsicle stick will be ox heart. So that's gonna go right there. So all of these are ox heart. And I'll show you guys in a week or so, I'll um, do a follow up video. Oh wow, this stem is really tangled and down in there. Sometimes they don't make it. Sometimes you don't get enough root. But for the most part, they do. I mean, look at, I didn't lose a single one of these that I transplanted over a week ago. Burying that stem as much as I can. We doing, boopies? My puppy's going up and down the stairs. So this one, I don't know how this happened, I must have just scattered, has one, two, three, what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six seedlings in there. And then these are gonna go back under the grow lights. They're not even grow lights, I use shop lights. Sometimes you only need a, a shop light because, I'll tell you what, unless you're growing things to flower inside, you don't need grow lights, those thousand dollar grow lights. I did actually buy one a couple years ago. It's hanging up behind me. And I am using it, but only because I ran out of shop lights. I put that over my heat mat because some things do need light to germinate. Um, so that's why I have that over there. So don't be afraid if you're pulling it and it breaks. Throw it out, it's okay. You were gonna throw it out anyway, right? Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to do this. I have these over here. These are Amish paste tomatoes. Super excited about these. I'm really hoping to can as many tomatoes as possible. And then over here I have, oh, let's see. These are some seedlings that I started in the soil blocks. These are sun gold cherry tomatoes right here. And these are yellow pear tomatoes. So these are all yellow tomato plants. Doing really well on germination over here. And then these ones that I have just starting to sprout are more Amish paste tomatoes. So uh, a bunch of those. I, I, I'm gonna be selling some seedlings, but I am gonna be growing probably 100 tomato plants myself, if not more. Whatever I don't sell, I'm growing. Cheer puppies. And I'll probably um, show you some of the stuff that I have going on in my greenhouse right now. A lot of things I moved right out there. All of my cold weather crops are out there. Um, so I'll show you a little bit in there. It's absolutely raining today and it's not very nice. So otherwise I'd be doing this video for you on the porch. But all right, so let's go out in the greenhouse. Well, it's raining. Check this out. My cousin, Mike, brought me all those windows. Those are gonna be part of the future greenhouse. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go in this one. Ugh. Okay, so in here I have cilantro, which is growing nicely. I have a whole bunch of snapdragons. Those are all little baby snapdragons from my second planting. I have all of this cabbage and kale and lettuce. There's a bunch of beets back there. There is, oh, I think that's scarlet kale or more Merlot lettuce. That's Merlot lettuce, okay. And then look at this tray. These are all sugar snap peas that are gonna be going in the ground on Sunday. I'm so excited. I also like that the, the King Tut purple pea, which is this pea right here, it has a little bit of purple coloration on the, st on the stalk. It's kind of cool looking. Very different than the regular just green kind. I also have my um, snapdragons that I have to uh, pinch very soon. And then I have my lisianthus, 
right there. So I guess this would be like an update on the Lysianthus. It does look great. It does look great. And it's all coming along and I'm sure I'll have flowers, but I definitely understand why people say that they buy the plugs because <laughs> this has been, uh, I don't know, it's been a crapshoot. Let's just call it a crapshoot. But they look so pretty, especially the ones that are, you know, the older ones that are, um, they were definitely not as good as they could have been though. So there's that. And then more cabbages and more kale. Um, and then the sweet peas are over here. Those are going to also be going, going in the ground on Sunday. And then these are my onions and leeks. They look great. Anyway, that's what I have in here. It's been an adventure so far. I'm going to take a picture use this as my thumbnail. Go get shelter! It's too rainy! My silkies always get so soaking wet. But when it rains, they can see because their hair gets, their fur, their hair, gets matted down and they can actually see. So some exciting news today. Check out where this box is from. David Austin. So I got my, well, I was confused oh, because I ordered five and I got one, but I forgot that I ordered, um, the other four will come potted. So this one was the only bare root that I ordered and it's the David Jekyll. And look, I, I gotta get out in the, from underneath the porch. Did I say David Jekyll? <laughs> David Austin Rose Gertrude Jekyll. And I wanna get out here so I can show you the, the beautiful, look at that. Look how beautiful this rose is. It's got gorgeous growth on the whole entire thing. It's so green and gorgeous. I can't wait to get it in the ground. And I'll do a video when they all come in. Uh, I'll do a video of planting that. Okay, so that David Austin rose that I showed you, the Gertrude Jekyll, that is a zone four and it's absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait for it to get some growth going and hopefully see a couple roses this season. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that you can thin your tomatoes without killing plants. I swear you can. And the best part is you usually double your production of tomatoes because for every couple of seeds that you, I mean, most tomatoes have at least an 85% germination rate, right? So if you plant two tomatoes, you're more than likely going to get two seedlings. So instead of pulling it and tossing it, feeding it to your chickens, putting it in the compost, just throwing it in the garbage, plant, plant it, just plant it, prick it out, plant it, and you'll have double the tomatoes. Anyway, I hope you learned something or maybe instead of thinning your tomatoes and tossing your seedlings this year, you'll give this a try. So thank you so much for joining me for this video and we'll see you in the next one.